So for this review, we're going to talk about bidirectional synthesis. So we know that we have semi-conservative replication because we have two strands of DNA, the double helix, and those strands get split apart and each one acts like a template for synthesis of the new strand. And so by the end of this, we will have two perfectly copied double helices of DNA. And this happens along the chromosome starting at the origin of replication. And this origin of replication starts to split the two strands that were in the double helix form, and it begins to expand in both directions. Right? And that's the bidirectional synthesis. But this causes some problems for D, uh, DNA replication because DNA polymerase can only extend the new strand in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. This is because DNA synthetase needs a free 3' prime OH group in order to add the next nucleotide to it. All right. So how do we figure out the leading versus the lagging strands here? The key is that you start to look at the original template strands. So we have the 3' prime to 5' prime on the top one from left to right, and the bottom one is 5' prime to 3' prime from left to right. So if we look at the origin of replication again, we know that this strand is moving to the left from here, so it's moving to the left. And so from right to left, we know that the template strand is 5 prime to 3 prime. We know that moving left to right from here, it is going to be 3 prime to 5 prime. And if we look at the bottom strand here, we know that from right to left, the bottom strand is 3 to 5 from right to left, so 3 to 5. And then the bottom strand from left to right is going to be 5 to 3. So now we know what the template strands are moving in each direction. And this allows us to know what the new strands are also going to be moving in each direction. So the new strand, if the, our template here on this top left, if our template is 5 to 3 as we go right to left, our new strand is going to be 3 prime to 5 prime in that same direction. All right. And if we look at the bottom left, the template is 3 to 5 as we go right to left. So the new strand has to be 5 prime to 3 prime in that same direction. And then we can do this for the other two strands. So top right is 3 to 5 template. So the new strand is 5 to 3 as it moves from the origin of replication towards that replication fork. And then the bottom strand is going to be 3 to 5. All right. Now, we know that DNA polymerase moves perfectly in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So if we look at which one of the new strands, which uh, two new strands have the direction 5 to 3 already, that is the direction that this works very well. So once it gets started, it just keeps going, and that makes these our leading strands. So here's the other one on the bottom left. As it moves 5 to 3 in the direction that the origin of replication is expanding, that also is perfectly fine. It's, the new strand is being made 5 to 3. It's going to be the leading strand as well. Now these other two have to be moving in the 3 to 5 prime direction as it moves towards the replication fork, as it expands. And we know that can't happen. So this is where, for the lagging strand, the lagging strand has to do this still in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. And so it does these in these Okazaki fragments. So this would be the first one made, and then it would jump forward a little bit and do another one in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. And once that one's done, it would do another one further over here. And it just keeps doing this, doing these lagging strands in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Same with this uh, one on the bottom right. So we create a new strand, 5 prime to 3 prime. But overall, we're still moving in the direction that that replication fork is proceeding. So here we have the leading and the lagging strands. We also know that we need a primer to start every one of these. So the RNA primer is going to be at the beginning of each and every one of these strands. So we only need one primer for the leading strands, because once they get started, they can keep going. But we need a primer at the beginning, the 5' prime end, of each and every Okazaki fragment for the lagging strands. We also know that eventually these will be replaced with um, DNA. And so 
That replacement comes by DNA polymerase 1. So DNA polymerase 1 is going to extend from the end of one Okazaki fragment and go through the primer, therefore replacing it with DNA. This also occurs to connect the strands kind of right at the edge of the uh, replication fork, and eventually this is going to lead to two completely linked strands. The last step of this is we know that we need ligase to link the last little bits together, and that completes the, com the full set of strands. All right. The other enzymes we need to remember about, we have at the replication forks, we have two replication forks, one going in each direction. In that area, we have helicase working. Helicase unzips the DNA double helix in order for the two strands to act as a template. Ahead of that, we have topoisomerase, which is, if you remember, topoisomerase is relaxing the supercoiled DNA uh, double helix as helicase unzips it, so it has to work ahead of it to un unsupercoil it. Um, we also have single-stranded RNA binding proteins that are going to bind to the single-stranded DNA right behind the helicase to prevent these two strands from re-zipping back up right behind the helicase. All right, so this allows the template actually to be read at these replication forks. So one of the things you need to think about, we have a list of the enzymes that you need to know about. We have helicase, we have single-stranded binding RNA binding proteins. We have um, topoisomerase, we have uh, the DNA polymerase 3, DNA polymerase 1, we have RNA primase, we have all these enzymes. Think about what would happen to replication if any one of if each of those was mutated. So for example, if helicase was mutated, you can't unzip the double helix, therefore you don't open up a template to read, no DNA replication will occur. On the other hand, if DNA polymerase 1, which replaces the RNA primers, was mutated, the RNA primers could not be replaced, they would uh, degrade, and so you'd have these big large gaps where the primers were all throughout. And so even though DNA replication proceeded, it would have these huge holes in it, and that would obviously be a problem. So think about what would happen if each of these were mutated, what would be the result in DNA replication?